Welcome to this week's newsletter. I finally got my chance, it's my time to shine my paws on a holiday. So, let's start off with the green board. Paul loves the green boards, let's start here. So, last week, President's Tankards, well done to Mickey Howard and Andy Burns who had a 61 net. But unfortunately, they were picked to first place winners Andy Wells and John Harris with a 61. They just had a slightly better back nine to a 27 to a 31. So, well done Andy, well done John. Well, them lessons are paying off John, well done mate. Uh, right then, what happened also? Ladies Club Championships. Uh, who won that? We had Chris Rollins with the gross with 176 over the two days. And the net was absolutely smashed by Maddie Badger, 128. So well done Maddie, that was good. And well done Chris, well done for winning the gross. Um, a couple of weeks before that, I've just got all my notes from Anne, thank you Anne. Uh, the ladies ping, ping winners at Lion Stabberford, which was the 20th and the 24th of June, went on to Maxine Burrows and Lucy Buckley, won the juniors. Come on the juniors. Uh, didn't set a score here, but congratulations to them. Also, what else we got? We had Seniors Open, which was yesterday. Great day, absolutely jam-packed. Went on for day pay for organising it. Fantastic organisation as usual. Um, it's got a lot of winners here, all the results are on the newsletter, so have a look in the newsletter, uh, on the written bit, sorry. But the overall winner was won by a house Zone member, and it was won by senior captain Alan Tide with 39 points. So well done Alan, congratulations for that. Just looking down the list now, and mostly were dominated by house Zone members. Um, have a look in the newsletter and see if you get your name on there. So, what's coming up this week? We've got... Uh, we've got a men's and ladies medal, uh, two separate comps, just one's a men's and one's a ladies. So we've got that Saturday. I expect you all probably won't be here in the afternoon when England are playing. So I can imagine you a lot are playing in the morning, so just expect it to be a little bit busy in the morning. Uh, Sunday we've got a men's par, and to any time the ones. And I've also got the family mix for awesome as well. Uh, I don't think the draw has been done yet, but hopefully the next couple of days it will be. And the first tea is reserved on that list, one o'clock to two o'clock. Um, so, good luck to all the people playing that. Right, let's go on with the rest of the newsletter. Welcome here to the Putting Green at Howard's Owen. Well, the reason why I'm here is it's a nice sunny day, you all should be outside. But the main reason why I'm here is that foremost, I'm doing a free fitting and lesson with every purchase of a putter. So, what does that entail? What are you thinking? Why do I need a fitting for? Well, most people, I'll say, every fitting I've done, I'm putting with the wrong putter. And also the lesson can come in because also a bit of technique comes involved as well. They're sort of quite similar to fitting the lesson. And the lessons are fantastic. I've had a few people have a lesson with me and they've changed their putting. They've come down a couple of uh, shots with the handicap. And there's also, we've got loads of things in the shop. We've got this in the shop, which is 19.99. Nice little putting mirror to check everything's aligned properly. And then when me and Paul do lessons, we use, you know, drills like this and items like this to help you all get your putting ready. We've also got the the put out as well in the shop, you know, that little thing that looks curved up and try and get it in, get that perfect put. There's loads of things that can help your putting. So, when you're ready, get a pit to put a fitting with me. Let's have a look at your stroke and let's see if we can get any shots. Right. I'm on the first tee with Captain Key from Took Over Poor being in presenter. Quite nice, I like this. <laughs> uh, right, we all know charity weekends, the week Saturday, isn't it? 10 days or something like that. Uh, so, I'll pass you over to Keith to give you all the information. Okay, quite a lot to, to tell people about, Dan, so okay. apologies again for reading from my phone. Um, as you've just said, it's the 14th and 15th of July. Uh, we've got competitions on both days, sign-up sheets in the foyer. Um, the Saturday one is, is filling up quite quickly. The Sunday one, which we're doing a shotgun, uh, I'm just a bit worried people are, th are looking at that saying, well, it's the World Cup final. Uh, clearly football is coming home, uh, <laughs> and England will be playing somebody, we don't know who. Um, but it is all timed so that we finish in time to do a prize giving and then no. watch the World Cup. Perfect, final. perfect. It has been thought through. So if you're, <laughs> if you're sort of a bit edgy about signing up for that, that has all been timed. So there is space uh, for people to sign up still. Brilliant. Um, we send letters to all the members every year and ask for their support. Um, what I did was everyone that had a locker, uh, they had their envelope popped into the locker. If you don't have a locker, there's a like a box tray uh, which at the moment is in the bar. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay. Yeah, so that. If, if you could just have a look, take the um, the envelope with your name on, and, and any support that you can give us uh, is gratefully uh, appreciated. You know, it doesn't need to be a load of no, money. It's, if it's just little donations, they all add up, and if you've just got something you can give us as a raffle prize, that'd be fantastic yeah. as well. 
Um, the other thing that we do is Christine, uh, who's our ladies captain, she's organising the tea sponsorship this year. Okay, So if you've got a little business or uh, just uh, something you want to do personally, you can sponsor a tea for the weekend and we look for about £50 for that. Oh, okay, right. So, you know, uh, absolute bargain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so get in touch with Christine if you're interested in that. We're also going to do some silent auctions. Um, got some good four balls. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put those up for auction. And also we've got a strange thing called a hippo bag, uh, which I'd never heard of before yesterday. <laughs> but apparently it's an alternative to a skip uh, and people who are sort of in the know, uh, you know, they do well, use these things. If you're watching Paul, that'd be useful for you. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, as I say, it was a bit of a, a new one on me, but we'll put, be putting that up for auction and it's worth quite a lot of money. Um, so yeah, that, that's about it from me, but Dan, you're going to do something yeah, for us so as well, I'm aren't back. you? Yeah. Missed it last year, but if you remember a couple of years ago, I did for Brian Coldrick, that, uh, that is captain C. I'm going back on the bag again, that's what the bag's here. I'm caddying. A uh, pound ago is going to be like a raffle thing, so we're going to draw the name out, we're going to draw the name out probably next week sometime, yeah, next absolutely. Thursday, yeah. should we do that now? Yeah, okay. Next Thursday, week, good. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, we're going to clean your shoes, clean your clubs, uh, Get your yardage for you, it'll be a perfect caddy for you, don't worry. Ask Colin Isherwood, ask Quinn Andrews about their experience, they absolutely loved it. So, yeah, have a go in the shop, I'll be in the shop brilliant. all week. Okay, that's brilliant. Thanks for doing Thanks, that. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lovely. Thank Cheers. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that was great, well, didn't it? Yeah, Welcome to Zone Golf Club. You've got uh, junior organiser Dan Jackson. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Um, how's it going then? How are you topping the league? It's quite good. It's quite nice being top of the league. It's nice to show that all the training is paying off. It's um, Quite good, yeah, it's got a good vibe at the moment with the juniors. It's really good, it's very good at the moment, it's very good. And how's training going then? The training's going very good. Um, just had it last, uh, had it last Monday, um, going very well. Apologise if we are in anybody's way. Last week we went on the other side for a change. And um, yeah, something a bit different, just it keeps them going, keeps them getting together. Don't do little drills that they don't realise they're learning, but as Byron said the other day, um, it helps him make a couple of puts when they matches, so it does work, you just got to be keep going and keep going and keep going with it. And that's obviously, you know, getting a lot of people talking around the club about the juniors, you know, plenty of support it seems. Yeah, great support, I must say, since I took the job last May, I've had absolute fantastic support from everyone, every single section, every single member has been fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, every single member, every single section, also other teams, right? like the scratch team and the West Mids teams, they've been so supportive. Well, I do want to say thanks to Joel. Because Joel has been fantastic with him. He's trying to get him into the teams. He's done everything he can. He's been very, very supportive. So I want to say thanks to the Scratch team and the West Midlands team. And you, well, like you say, you've got a few of them broken through into there, haven't they? Yeah, the yeah. Tom's played a couple of matches. Lewis has played a couple of matches. They've won a couple of times, lost a few, but he's been played very well. So they've done their, they've done their bit in the, uh, in the team. So yeah, hopefully we get more in it. You know, there's a few people knocking the door, me and Joel. Uh, Communicating daily, you know, pretty sure next year might be a different team that Westminster. And they say about training, I mean, whenever we're around, you seem to have quite a bit of a backroom staff, if you like. I like that idea of backroom team staff, I like that. Well, you're always around, you're there, you're part of the staff. Yeah. But yeah, I've got Carl Badger who's there, I've got Andy Lennon who's always there. They, it's a nice little team we've got going, it's, it's quite a bit of fun on the days. I, look, I do look forward to it, it's good. And then they uh, obviously enjoy the hospitality. You knew that was going to be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, we are we are heads and heads and shoulders above everyone else. Last chance. See, we look so good from we, from when we start looking professional, from the way we practice, the way we play, the way we conduct ourselves, and even back into the club as after wearing suits, looking smart, looking like winners, and being treated like winners as well from yourselves. Well, you represent the club really well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Here. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, the good one. Thank you. I just want to say a couple of thank yous as well. I've got to say thank you to the whole club again because they have been fantastic. I've got to thank Paul for letting me have the time off. You know, I should be working this in the afternoon, but thank you, Paul. Um, thanks to Steve, HG Chairman. He's been absolutely fantastic. He said to me, Training, Dan, you just do what you need to do. You keep going. Um, I could, I've got so many thank yous. I, could, don't, I can't stop. But they're, they're the main ones. I want to say thank you to every single section, every single person. Anna Merlin. I can't forget Anna Merlin, the junior team through and through, for doing the handicaps. I could not do half the jobs that they do, so I want to say thanks to them. And I thank to all the parents as well. And thanks to the kids as well. They do actually treat you quite fresh, which I'm very grateful for. So I want to say a lot of thank yous. So I want to say thanks to the club and thanks to everyone. Brilliant. Keep up the good work and good luck for the uh, second half of the season. Thank you.
Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that newsletter. Dan's moment of fame there just shows you don't actually need me. Um, so we're at the back of the 11th green. Um, ball's come over the 11th green in the rough, but also our ball's managed to end up, you can't even see the ball, in an animal scraping. So you get relief. Obviously, you've got to get uh, your opponent, whoever you're playing with over here to make sure they're happy with the situation and you're not just going to pick the ball up uh, and drop it. So check with whoever you're playing with, first of all, that, that, that they're happy with it. Right, so this is clearly an animal scrape. So what do you do? Well, you get uh, one club length from your nearest point of relief that's no nearer the hole. So I've got the driver in our hand here. Um, so we're going to kind of make sure, and you actually get relief if it's interfere, if there's any animal scrapings interfering with your stance as well. It's not just your ball or your golf swing. So we need to make sure we get full relief from it. There's more animal scrapings there, but just here is our nearest point of relief. So it's always advisable to perhaps use a tee peg, stick it in the ground where your nearest point of relief is. Then you get one club length from there. So I'm gonna put another tee peg in the ground at that spot. Uh, once you're happy with that, and whoever you're playing with is happy with that, pick the golf ball up. Perhaps always advisable to mark where the golf ball is as well. Um, and then drop the ball in between those two points. Now there's a good chance here it's going to run back into this. Now if it runs more than a club length from where the ball first hit uh, the ground, uh, then you can re-drop it. Now, unfortunately here, there is a good chance when I drop this in between these two markers, I'm not allowed, it's not allowed to make contact close to the hole. I've got to drop it in between these two markers. Uh, if it does happen to run back here, actually, that's bad luck. That's how, somehow, sometimes how the rule goes. Um, let's just hope that it doesn't. So, well, okay. So there it is, I've dropped it. It hasn't run more than a club length uh, once it hit the ground. So I've now got to play that from where that spot is, from where that ball's finished. Um, I'm not going to use this club, but you know I can make a swing at it. So I've ended up being a bit lucky there. I could have been unlucky, it could have ended up back here, which would have been obviously very unlucky. Uh, just one of those things, unfortunately. But as it happens, I'm all right, and hopefully I can play this now and, and chip it onto the green. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed Dan uh, on this week's newsletter, and maybe you'll be seeing more of him on them in the future.